Hey guys, today I'm going to take another look at Sebion Linux. I'm going to do another install of Sebion. Uh, one of the first videos I did on this channel was an install of Sebion's Minimal Fluxbox Edition, what they call their Minimal Hacker Edition. And my review of that installation was a very negative one because I ended up downloading a very old ISO. It was almost a year old which for a rolling release is ancient. So there were a million updates that had to be done. The install process was painstakingly, painstakingly slow. So what I'm going to do I'm to you know revisit Sebion, give it a more fair review because I have been living in Sebion in a virtual box uh, off and on uh, since that review. I've kept that installation up and Sebion's really been a fantastic distro you know I'm just gonna go ahead and share that with you, with you guys other than that install process I've really liked the time I've spent with Sebion so I wanted to do another review a more fair review pull down a more recent ISO not of the minimal edition I'm gonna pick one of their uh, actual desktop environments too to install that way again a more fair review so Sebion's homepage here at Sebion.org uh, for those that don't know Sebion is a Gen 2 based Linux distro, so rolling release distribution that aims to be, you know, easy to install and user friendly. That was not the case on my last video. Again, though, that was mostly my fault. I pulled down a very old ISO. So we go to Sebion's download page, click the desktop edition, of course, we want one of their desktop editions. Now, this is the one I chose last time the Fluxbox edition, minimal for hackers. Uh, you guys can't see this, but when I roll my cursor of the mouse over the download button, I can tell that this is Sebion 16.11. So that's November of 2016, last year. And the same for the Monte edition, the same for the XFCE edition, the same for the KDE edition, the same for the G GNOME condition, uh, edition. So all five of these desktop editions from their download pages, all five of those, or over a year old for the latest snapshot. So, yeah, I, I made a mistake by pulling down an old ISO, but Sebion really, really needs to update these snapshots. These are ancient snapshots for a Gen 2 based, you know, rolling release distribution. So what I need to do is I need to see if I can find like a development release, like a daily build. So back to their download page when we have the option of desktop, server, or cloud there is the option to grab a daily build so that's what I'm going to do alright it looks like they the daily builds they're doing a forensics F, XFCE for those that want to do like penetra penetration testing I guess uh, we have GNOME KDE LXQT Mate the minimal edition again I'm not gonna do that the server spin base and then XFCE I'm going to download the daily build of the LXQT desktop environment. I, I don't mind LXQT. I, I like it really more than most of these other desktops, although I don't mind XFCE or Mate. KD and GNOME are a little too heavy for me. I, I really don't dig those. So I'm going to pull down the LXQT latest ISO. It was uh, dated December 15th, 2017, so that was yesterday. I'll be right back and I'll begin the installation in VirtualBox. Alright, I loaded up the ISO inside VirtualBox and it booted us into a live environment here, the LXQT live desktop environment. I have this little icon on the desktop here, install Sabion. I'm going to click that. Okay, and I've already run into one problem. This icon that was the installer when I clicked it did nothing. So I went and found the Calamares installer here in the menu. When I click on it, it does nothing. So what I'm going to have to do is try to figure out what's going on with the Calamaris installer. So I'm going to open up a terminal. I'm going to sudo Calamaris and then give it dash D for a flag. Okay, and that launches it. Okay, I'm wondering why I can launch it from a terminal, but clicking on the icon or clicking it on the menu didn't work. But anyway, I got the Calamaris installer up and running. This is a daily build anyway. This is not an official snapshot, so it could be buggy, but at least I'm going to have fresh packages. I shouldn't it shouldn't take 2 hours to uh to download, you know, updates like it did on that last video of Sebion I did. 
All right, language. It's chosen English. That's correct. It is not chosen the correct time zone. I'm going to choose the central time zone in the U.S. It's chosen English U.S. for me. That's correct. I'm going to choose to erase disk and give the entire 15 gig hard drive of this virtual machine to Sabion. We need to create a username. I'm just going to call my username Sabion. Give that user a password. Log in automatically without asking for a password is ticked on by default. I'm going to tick that off. I like to be asked for a password when I log into my system. Use the same password for the administrator account. It's ticked on by default. I'll leave that one ticked on. So I'm going to have the same password for my home user and for the root user. All right, summary. Location's right. Keyboard's right. The partition scheme looks good. I click next and this should begin installing. Probably take five, ten minutes to install. I'll be back. And the install completed no problem. It probably took ten minutes or less. You need to click the restart now box here and click done to restart your machine to finish the installation. I'll be right back. Alright, and we're booting into our newly installed Sabion LXQT. See how long boot up time takes. All right, we got to our login manager very fast. Type in my username and my password. All right, and we are in the LXQT desktop environment. Out of the box, the virtual box guest editions work. I didn't have to do any uh, finagling with that, uh, so we get a full screen resolution. Uh, so already, I can tell you my previous review of Sebion most of that was my fault. Uh, pulling down a recent build and then uh, actually installing you know a desktop environment rather than going with one of the minimal editions or one of the server editions you know yeah okay so I'm gonna do my standard review here I'm gonna go through the LXQT menu and see what is installed by default oh we have a little bit of a graphical glitch I click the menu here and it comes up up there. That may be a virtual box problem though. Let me see if fooling around with the screen resolution maybe changes some of that. Okay, and I'm back. Uh, I logged out of this LXQT session and logged back in and now the menu is working properly. Uh, that is not the fault of uh, Sabion. It's probably not even the fault of LXQT. It's just you know, I'm running this inside a virtual machine, so it had a little graphical hic hiccup there. Uh, sometimes that kind of stuff happens. I've seen stuff like that happen in these menus before, where you click on the menu, you know, at the bottom, and it appears in one of the other corners of the screen. Not a big deal. All right, so under accessories, we have Adam. Adam is an IDE, I believe. Let's see if it'll launch. Yeah, so here is Adam. Uh, that actually took like 10 15 seconds to, to pop up there it took a while for that program to launch PC man FM of course is our file manager we do the about PC man FM and I believe this is will be the uh, PC man FM uh, QT version of it all right under games we have mind test under graphics we have MU PDF our PDF viewer under internet Chrome is our browser so Google Chrome not the open source Chromium, not the open source Firefox, Google Chrome. That's interesting. You don't see very many Linux distros install Google Chrome out of the box like that. Under programming, we have Atom again. We have a Sabion category, which, you know, has our uh, download locations, Gen 2 documentation, Git Live Help, bug reporting, we have our repos, forum, homepage, packages. Sound and video, we have the VLC media player, which I love that they install that. Of course, VLC is not installed on a lot of Linux distros by default because of all of its uh, proprietary codecs and stuff. It's not free and open source either. So, I mean, if you're going to install Chrome, you might as well install, install VLC too. So that's a good selection. System tools, we have the KDE Partition Manager. We have Managed Printing. We have the Qt Terminal. So, you know, a QT terminal. Um, 
it's not the about page I wanted. I wanted this one, a lightweight multi-platform terminal emulator. So the Q terminal, nice little terminal emulator. Under preferences, we have our LXQT preferences, where we have the LXQT configuration center, your standard, you know, like control center that you see in pretty much every desktop environment these days. And we also have, you know, settings for appearance, brightness, date and time, desktop, desktop, file associations, keyboard, mouse, locale, monitor, our open box settings for the open box window manager, session settings, shortcut keys, user and groups. It mentions the open box window manager. So uh, let me see, what can I open here? I'll open the terminal. It is using the open box window manager. Actually, it's probably using the open box QT version of open box uh, since we're in LXQT. But the frame around our windows, around the programs that we open, is the open box window manager. Close that. All right. Also under preferences, we have iBus preferences, NVIDIA server settings, network connections, Qt config tool, and the Rego application browser. Now that is our graphical uh, package manager. Sabion uses the Entropy package manager. It has two different interfaces. It has Rego, which is the graphical interface to Entropy. That's this. And in the command line, you have Equo, which is the command line interface to Entropy. So for those of you that wish to have a GUI to install and remove software, Rego. Uh, very in intuitive. You know, you have your categories here. For example, I choose games here. Click view. Nope. There's nothing to view here. Let's see. If I go back and choose multimedia, choose view. Uh, nothing found in multimedia either. Hmm. Well, you know, we might need to run some an, an update of the system. I'm not sure. Let's see what else I could search for. How about Firefox? It wasn't installed. Yeah, it's not finding Firefox either, so this uh, graphical package manager is not working right now. So uh, I opened up the, the QT terminal here and ran sudo equo update. Again, equo is the command line uh, interface to entropy to update the repos. Now, when I go back to uh, Rego, you know, the graphical package manager interface, and I go back and I click that games category. Now it actually shows me games. So I click games view, and now we have, you know, the list of games that are available in the Sabian repos. So everything's working correctly. We just had to, you know, run an update. So what do I think about Sabian LXQT? Well, I've got to say, the install process for Sabian running the Calamares installer, the graphical installer, was dead simple. Uh, quite a bit easier than running through the text-based installer that I ran through on the minimal edition. But even the text-based installer, it's not bad. It was, it was pretty straightforward. But this installation went so much better because I had a snapshot of Sabian from one day ago. Not one year ago, which is what I did on my previous video which caused so many problems. I, I had a lot of problems getting Sabion installed using that one year old ISO that I did before. So this one was a breeze. From start to finish, 10 minutes, Sabion LXQT installed. What do I think about their implementation of LXQT? Uh, it's very, very minimal. There's not much installed in the LXQT desktop environment by default. I mean, we have a browser, we have a file manager, we have a terminal, and then we have all the LXQT, you know, system settings and uh, preference settings and stuff, but not much else. You know, VLC was also installed. So I like that because I get to pick and choose the applications that go on this system. You know, instead of giving me a full, you know, kitchen sink suite of software where 80% of it is, st is stuff I either don't want or will never use, you know, I really like this. So for you guys that are interested in a LXQT, desktop environment on a rolling release distribution, particularly a Gen 2 based rolling release distribution. Sabion's LXQT edition. Give it a try. Peace guys.